to this is a continuation video of my uh, previous video in module one you can refer to that and uh, today we are going to discuss about the foundations of artificial intelligence so here uh, this provides the disciplines that uh, contributed ideas techniques uh, to uh, artificial intelligence so here different disciples uh, which led to the development of uh, uh, different techniques in artificial intelligence so first is the philosophy how this contributed for the improvement in ai so here uh, philosophy can formal rules be used to draw valid conclusions okay so here uh, what uh, rules can be used to come to certain conclusions using philosophy in order to develop intelligent systems for the ai how does the mind arise from a physical brain and where does knowledge come from how does knowledge lead to action so these are some of the contributions from philosophy for the development of intelligent agents like how we draw conclusions by following certain rules through experience and experiments then how to make the intelligent systems also uh, to mimic the brain of the computer and what uh, physical constraints we have to consider, how to develop the neurons, and where does the knowledge come from. So this mainly deals with what dualism, rationalism, materialism, empirism, and induction. So these are uh, certain logical positivism and observation sentences which are considered uh, from this uh, foundation that is philosophy. Next, mathematics also plays a very crucial role in uh, intelligent systems. That is, what are the former rules to draw valid conclusions? What kind of inference rules we have to follow? So, how to implement the inference rule? How to use the proportional, propositional logic? Okay, and how to combine with this NLP? So, like this, how to draw the formal rules to come to certain conclusions? What can be computed? How do we reason with uncertain information? To understand all this, what we do, we try to make use of some algorithms and try to incom uh, overcome the inc incompleteness and traceability. So any algorithm we propose using mathematics, so it should satisfy these three properties. And even economics also contributed for the development of AI. Here, uh, what uh, AI has learned is, how should we make decisions as to maximize payoff and how should we do this when others may not go, go along and how should we do this when the payoff may be far in the future so these are certain things we have to consider so that the ai should be useful for us next is the neuroscience and how this discipline has contributed to the ideas of ai means how do brain process information? Neuroscience mainly deals with uh, how the neurons in the human brain works the same way we want to design a neuron in artificial neural networks. Okay, so the, that was the development of uh, ANN using this neuroscience. So neuroscience is nothing but it is the study of nervous system, particularly the brain. Okay, the same way ANN was uh, designed by observing the human brain, the same way the neurons are also designed in order to make the uh, neurons, so based on the inputs received from the neurons, the agent has to take some decisions, okay, to solve some of the problems, to overcome some problems uh, so that the growth should be economically, uh, the growth of the uh, products should be more and benefit should be more. So, although the exact way in which the brain enables thought it one of the great mysteries of science, the fact that it does enable thought has been appreciated for thousands of years because the evidence that strong blows to head can lead to mental incapacitation. So, here uh, same way the neurons like how we see the neurons, uh, human neurons here also it has a uh, synapse where one neuron can communicate with the another neuron dendrites to pass the uh, information from one neuron to another neuron so this is uh, this will discuss again in the coming fifth module about the neurons so in this particular topic we are uh, seeing how the different uh, technologies different disciplines contributed to the ideas of ai next comes psychology here how do 
humans and animal think and act so here the same way that is the cognitive psychology which views the brain as an information processing device so cognitive psychology can be tracked uh, traced back at least to the works of william james also in uh, and uh, helm holds also in insisted that perception involved a form of unconscious logical interference so here uh, we know that any agent first it should perceive it should uh, see the things in the environment then it has to uh, learn and take certain actions here okay so that is nothing but the uh, through the psychology with the training what it has undergone it has to take some decisions next is the computer engineering so how can we build an efficient computer okay so for artificial intelligence to succeed we need two things one is intelligence and another is artifact the computer has been the artifact of choice so the modern digital electronic computers was invented independently and almost simultaneously by scientists in three countries embattled in world war 2 so next is the control theory and uh, cybernetics so here how can articrafts operate under their own control so modern control theory especially the branch known as stochastic optimal control theory has its goal the design of systems that maximize an objective function over time so here also we have from this we have taken how to design the uh, agent okay mathematically so that uh, it it should perform it piece that is performance environment actions and sensors should be properly validated next is the linguistics how does language relate to thought so in 1857 bf skinner published verbal behavior there was a comprehensive detailed account of the behaviorist approach to language learning written by foremost expert in the field so here computational linguistic processing the problem of understanding language soon turned out to be considered more complex than it seemed to be in 1957 so here uh, hybrid field of computational linguistics or natural language computational linguistic processing was used in order to uh, translate from one language to the another language so these are some of the um, or disciplines uh, so disciplines that uh, contributed ideas techniques to the ai and coming for the history of artificial intelligence so here uh, so here also you may get this question for five marks so that is the gestation of artificial intelligence from 1940 through 43 to 1955 so the first work that is now generally recognized as ai was done by warren mcculloch and walter pitts so they drew on three uh, sources that is knowledge of the basis physiology and function of neurons in the brain a formal analysis of propositional logic due to russell and whitehead and a turing's theory of computation they proposed a model artificial neurons in which each neuron is categorized as being on or off with a switch to on occurring in response simulation by a sufficient number of neighboring neurons so this was the first time they started working on the neurons in 1943 to 55 next is the birth of artificial intelligence from 1956 so princeton was home to another influential figure in ai john mccarthy the father of artificial intelligence after receiving his phd there in 1951 and working for 2 years as an instructor McCarthy moved to Stanford and uh, Dartmouth College, which was to become a official birthplace of the field. So here, he is the he is called as the father of artificial intelligence. Next, uh, early enthusiasm, great expectations from nineteen fifty two to sixty nine. So here, GPS was probably the first program embodied the thinking humanly approach. so the success of gps subsequent programs as models of cognition led nevel and simon to formulate the famous physical symbol system hypothesis which states that a physical symbol system 
has the necessary and physical symbol system sufficient means for general intelligent action. Next, uh, a dose of reality from 1966 to 73. That is, from the beginning, AI researchers were not shy about making predictions of their coming successes. Uh, the following statement by Herbert Seaman is often quoted terms such as visible future. So it can be interpreted in various ways, but Simon also made more concrete predictions that within 10 years, the computer would be chess champion and significant mathematical theorem would be proved by machine. Next, knowledge-based systems was developed in 1969 to 79. So here the picture problem solving that had arisen during the first decade of AI was of general purpose search uh, mechanism trying to string together elemental reasoning steps to weak method and find the complete solutions. So here, uh, uh, the to some of the, the alternative to weak methods is to use more powerful domain-specific knowledge that allows larger reasoning steps and can more easily handle typically occurring cases in narrow areas of expertise. And AI becomes an industry standard from 1980 to present. So the first successful commercial export system uh, for AI began operating at the Digital Equipment Corporation. Okay. So next is the return of neural networks from 1986 to present. So here back propagation in the, the mid-1980s. At least four different groups reinvented the back propagation learning algorithm, uh, which was first found in 1969 by Byerson and Ho. So here the algorithm was applied to many learning problems in computer science and psychology and the widespread dissemination of results in the collection parallel distributed processing uh, caused a great excitement uh, connectionist. So these so-called connectionist models of intelligent systems were seen by some direct computators both at the symbolic models is presented by Neville and Simon to the logistic approach of McCarthy. And AI adopts the scientific method that is in recent years, uh, uh, all the approaches are based on hidden Markov models. So they have become, uh, they became to dominate the area. Then is the emergence of intelligent agents from 1955 to present that is uh, uh, perhaps encouraged by the progress in solving the sub problems of AI. Researchers have also started to look at the whole agent problem again. So the work of Alan Neville, John Laird and Paul Rosenbaum uh, in 1990 is the best example of complete agent architecture. Then the availability of very large database from 2001 to present. That is some recent work in AI suggests that for many problems it makes more sense to worry about the data and uh, less tricky about what algorithm to apply. So here this is true because of increasing availability of very large data sources. For example, trillions of words of English, billions of images of the web. Okay guys, so this is just uh, to understand the history and philosophy of uh, artificial intelligence. So in next uh, coming videos, I'm going to discuss about agent and its environment. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment. Thank you.